Coming to you direct from the nerve center of the galaxy's greatest comic. This is the 2000 AD Thrill Cars. Borag Thang, Earthlets, and welcome to the latest episode of the 2080 Thrillcast Lockdown Tapes. And I am your host, as always, Malt Char, and we're careering towards the end of 2020. Thank God, I couldn't even say 2020 properly then. That's a bad sign. Um, one of the series that starts uh, has started already in 2080 is Visions of Deadworld, which ties into Fall of Deadworld, which is Keck W and Dave Kendall's chronicling of, well, the fall of the world of the Dark Judges. Um, But it's more than just a story about them, it's a story about the people who are caught up in this uh, apocalyptic event. And it's something that's been running for a number of years, and uh, Fall of Deadworld has uh, really been one of those kind of long-term sleeper hit where it's picked up a lot of fans as it's gone on um it's developed into more than just kind of you know a standard um dark judges story it's not just about the body horror it's also about uh, the human characters and uh, being caught up in all of this and ask some really interesting questions about the dark judges and their mission so uh it was delight to talk to keck and to dave uh, about their work now um because of the way that skype works um keck is mostly a disembodied voice throughout so <laughs> sorry for those of you uh, watching on video who are expecting uh, three of us on screen but uh, you'll be delighted to know you get to see dave and me crystal clear so we'll talk to them in a second. Make sure that you have picked up uh, the Christmas prog or placed your pre-order. It's a, a bumper issue, absolutely packed with stuff. The, the, these, uh, you know, we talked about them on uh, the podcast last week. These end of year issues, you know, we can't do annuals anymore, which is a real shame. Um, but these are the next best thing, and uh, they not only round off the year, but they launch us into the following year. In 2021, if this issue is anything to go by, it's going to be an absolute corker. So, uh, make sure that you are signed up to the Thrillmail, 2080.com forward slash Thrillmail. If you're not, there's going to be a special present going out in the lead up to Christmas. Um, Also, keep your ears peeled for further announcements about various um, owl things uh, that may or may not be happening in the future. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be announcing our uh, uh, schedules over the next week or so. So graphic novels for next year, both from 2080 and the Treasury of British Comics. It's going to be an exciting 2021. Now, without much further ado, let's crack on, as I always say, um, and uh, hear from Keck W and Dave Kendall about Visions of Dead World. So the Dark Judges are returned, well, have returned to 2000 AD with uh, the Dead World series, a new uh, uh, on Dead World. And, and uh, Dead World has, has been one of those kind of slow burn sleeper hits that we've had uh, with 2000 AD as we've explored the, the downfall of the homeworld of the Dark Judges. And uh, it's wonderful to be joined by a uh, series uh, writer Keck W, who's on audio. Hiya, Keck. Hello, how you doing, Mike? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I'm slow today. Um, but uh, and also uh, Dave Kendall, who's a series artist. Hi, Dave. Hello, Mike. Hello, Keck. How you doing? Hello. Um, now you've both been on before um, to chat about Dead World, but I think Dave, this was long time ago um, for possibly the original series. I think it was the Dreams of Dead World. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's been a long. That's six years ago. Oh, is it six years? Oh um, my God! Really? Yeah. yeah. Six, six, I think. What happened there? Oh, God. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Six years. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, another I, podcast. I feel old now. <laughs> <laughs> My so flesh fun. is crumbling away from me. <laughs> that is that is quite the, the note to begin on. <laughs> uh, about coming up. Uh, but like, like, like I said before we start recording, 2020. So 2020, everyone's entitled yeah. to feel... Blame, uh, it for, blame it for everything. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, Visions of Dead World uh, has begun. Uh, so I wanted to kind of catch up on what the series has done over the last few years and uh, what the plans are, uh, spoiler free, uh, for the future. Um, Kek, do you want to start off by talking uh, a little bit about uh, Visions of Dead World and how this takes the story on from the previous series? Yeah, um, kind of a boring non-answer to start off with. I'm not actually sure, and Dave might be able to help me remember, how how we drifted into doing Visions at this point. I I know we had some conversations about maybe doing some one-offs for a change rather than following the main story, but I'm, I'm not actually sure... Uh, what point we kind of went let's let's do this but but i remember asking running it past matt and matt saying yeah sure let's do it and then sort of saying uh well let's call this maybe visions because we'd done dreams before um for those that don't remember we did four one-off stories featuring each of the four central dark judges a few years back six years ago and didn't really want to repeat ourselves by sort of doing a similar thing, sort of just revisiting death, mortis, etc. But instead wanted to show some different aspects of the timeline, of the character, of the story. Uh, so we wanted to kind of maybe play around with different um, parts of, of Dead World, different parts of its chronology. So in the opening episode... Um, there's no spoilers there because that's already run, but we kind of start seeing some of the dots, the way stations along the way on the, the story. So we start sort of seeing glimpses um, of a time beyond the dark judges when they've gone, when death and th- those guys have gone. We see glimpses of horrors that await us down the line, really terrifying, nasty things. Um, and in the subsequent episodes, we kind of, jump backwards and forwards in time as it were from the beginning of the fall and see and visit various characters along the way does that make sense so it's a kind of a hop skip and a jump through the dead world timeline i mean when, i think when we start palette cleanser for the so we do a few little horror horror vignettes um that's that was the original idea wasn't it that a three a four or five part um story with a few little um little branches and a little few little bits and pieces which would just take us away give us something away from the main story so we could just recharge our batteries on that wasn't it i think but then it's memories better than mine dave thank you <laughs> but it's kind of like this eight part you know basically another book hasn't it um yeah so we've got, we've got to get back to the main story sometime but yeah i i, I thoroughly loved the first episode i mean the the statue of death with the teeth was just horrible <laughs> that that seems to have grabbed a few people's yeah. eyeballs that one it was weird because that was almost a throwaway idea you know what what would somebody with a huge ego and vanity like him what would he do well he'd have a statue built <laughs> how big would that statue be oh wait a minute teeth <laughs> of course dad's a dentist <laughs> so you know statue of teeth why not I mean, who builds I'm, it? I'm... <laughs> 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 we won't go there. That's, 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 uh... <laughs> Let me get back to you on that one, Dave. <laughs> I'm interested uh, in how the series has developed because uh, I'll ask you to to remind our listeners um, about the origin story of uh, Dead World. Uh, well, this 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 uh, the whole kind of fall of Dead World idea. Um, but I'm interested to, uh, in your thoughts on how things have progressed over the last few years, how uh, closely uh, things tack to the original idea, um, but also how uh, things that have surprised you both. Do you want to go first, Dave? Um, yeah, OK. So it started off with this silly dream I had, but it's it's really progressed. I mean, really, it's Keck's baby in a way. I mean, I, I chuck in the odd idea here and there, but I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And it's, it's, it's constantly surprising and it requires an awful lot of design work because nothing's really been done apart from Bolland and maybe a bit of Arthur Ranson. 
um, with Half-Life, there's been very little done on Dead World in terms of design. So it's a, I, I'm enjoying it, especially because every little bit of it has to be designed from the floor upwards. So like I said, I mean, I've got about five sketchbooks now of ideas and I'm, that's one of my favorite bits of the whole thing of designing this world that Keck's throwing at me. Um, different, especially with this series. I mean, the visions requires a, a, a whole design process for each episode. But uh, yeah, I, I I have no idea where it's going. I, I love I love Keck's ideas for the, you know, the maybe the future, especially with the Bone Man idea. But there's so much more to go yet, and it's it's constantly challenging. And, I, and I'm not at all um, jaded with the thing yet at all. It's uh, I think we've done about 400 pages now, roughly. Which <laughs> Jesus, that, really? Yeah, um, we're reaching that stage. Uh, I think we're at least three hundred, three hundred fifty. So, yeah, wow. it's scary. <laughs> You've just blown my mind. Six six years and three hundred and fifty pages later. It's like, oh my word! I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, I, and I think every page is right. I got to do another page, and you're thinking that's that's going to take a while. But then you think, oh, it's three hundred pages behind me now. So. It's it's getting it's getting easier, but every every episode requires something new to be designed, which is, which keeps it fresh. Really, I think. Hopefully, it, it shows in in each episode. I hope. I I can only apologise, Dave, because I I am actually aware through working with you how much effort you put into because I've I've seen the sketchbooks. They're they're monumental. So it's th- there's me pecking away on a typewriter and 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 bless you you've got you kind of got to bring all this stuff into in, to life you know visualize it sort of build it all so i could i can only apologize for the so work i create honestly it's, it's so in, i mean honestly it's so enjoyable to get into the sketchbooks um and just just work out these concepts so it's just that's not a problem <laughs> you know it really isn't i mean that's my job isn't it but, but you know, you know. But when you say you know, a huge army of soft soldiers. I mean, yeah, that gets. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's easier for you than me. <laughs> I I think I usually try and say something like you know one or two in the foreground <laughs> with a, <laughs> a hint of eighteen billion in the background. <laughs> yeah. But what amazes me, Dave, actually is 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 not to go off road. But for, for all that design work. Um, that you have to do it strikes me and you may start swearing at me at this point that that it strikes me that you're relatively quick or it seems that way Um, so you'll turn your pencils around in a week and then another week you go to fully rendered I know you're putting in long long days doing all this but um, that strikes me as being quite quick compared with some artists I I was going to say something now which hopefully hopefully doesn't get back to Tharg and Matt that uh I, I, I like to have a deadline and Matt's, Matt's been quite relaxed this year and I've, I've been quite relaxed this year because I've been issued with no deadline but now it's being published I'm busy catching but yeah I really do procrastinate I don't think and that's just 2020. <laughs> <I'll blame laughs> 2020. But yeah, it's, it's it's we're heading towards the end now. I've got two more episodes to do, and you know we're we're close to finish now. So yeah. So deadlines give you a bit of focus, basically. I like I like a bit of pressure. Yeah, I work better under pressure than just here. Here's as much time as you need, and you know. Because because quite I, often I. <laughs> <laughs> Mike making a note. <laughs> quite, quite often, though, I get emails from you, Dave, like one in the morning or one thirty. So, for all I know, you're doing like a forty-hour day or something. So, um, that's just my. I like working at night, but it's, sometimes I do do the school run, so that's a bit trickier. Yeah. Yeah. So no, um, no, no, kind of busley ice baths. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> I don't know about this. Uh, what did uh, uh, Judgment on Gotham, I think it was, where uh, I'm pretty sure it was Bisley, where um, he was coming up right against deadline. Of course, the print slot had been booked. So I think it was Steve McManus or Richard Burton was round there, round his house. My <laughs> spats. What? Some like, I may be confusing my anecdote. But... No. <laughs> 
Now that would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost somebody. Yeah, so um, Simon had to have ice baths to. I how did prob- this help? I, I, well, keep him awake. Oh, really? Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm not mixing my anecdotes there. I'll I'll have to um, dig out my my fill power overload later and. Uh, oh right. Check. The, but yeah, the, I, bisley, the bisley ice bath sounds like the worst sports team ever. <laughs> <laughs> Very sharp. They're all they're all like there, right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we with with the dark judges, it it's. It's really interesting time for them, but particularly over the last couple of years, because um, we've got two threads running with them. You know, if you ignore any um, appearance in the main dread strip, because um, there was Dark Justice that was John and um, Greg Staples, and then um, uh, Nick Percival took over on on art duties. We've had uh, Dominion and Torture Garden, um, and we had Nick and and Dave Hine on the podcast the other day. Uh, now that's a different kettle of fish, in that not only is it dark judges in space, but it's it's kind of trying to do something different with the dark judges than what they necessarily uh, have done before, and it opens up lots of questions as we discussed in the podcast about the nature of the characters and, and the nature of horror and all this and the other. But with Fall of Deadworld, and and, and this is something we we have talked about before, but I, I want to explore it in some more detail. This is plugging into the history. This is the continuity of the strip, but again doing something different with that I, I want to get your views on on how you have plugged into rejected moved beyond paralleled um what we already know what what people like john wagner um and uh, alan grant have established in the uh, judge dread and judge anderson you know how, how do you feel that you've gone alongside rejected what what is already there well ev- everything that john and Alan has done is is canon. Obviously, you know you, you you're on the shoulder of Jones, etc. Um, so I've not thrown anything away. That that's all canon to me. It's the stuff I grew up reading, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <coughs> I, I I would say I've cher- we we've cherry picked elements of it that maybe we wanted to to build up. Um, I mean the one where Anderson uh, goes across to Deadworld, so we sort of see the 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 Deadwood judges, etc. And Dave and I have kind of Dave's based the designs on uh, uh, on, on the art from all that. Uh, I really loved that. That was sort of had a feel of like a almost a fascist crumbling world. So I think we've kind of borrowed some elements from that. Things like the posters, the Nazi-like uniforms. Um, just really used that as a seed of an idea. It, it one point I had, is it half life? The character in there that Alan brought in the kind of insectoid yeah. thing. At one point I started doing an outline that had him as one of the characters in, in the thing that Dave and I would do, was doing, but it just felt too crowded. Um, it didn't quite work. So I said to, to Matt, do you know, I'm going to put, I'm going to pull that out. And Matt said, fair enough but i think maybe we might have had a reference to half-life in like a lab scene or something dave did, I, think uh, he ended, did, I think he was in a he was very very subtly put into a one of uh, the sisters uh vats of, yes um yeah he was he was featured but i think you have to look very closely yeah so so he ended up not being a character but we're trying to honor honor sort of what uh john and alan have done before us by putting little, I guess, Easter eggs and things like that in there. Um, but we're not following them entirely. We're just cherry picking elements of that. Uh, the things that feel kind of horrib- <laughs> horrible <laughs> or like <laughs> fe- feed into the sort of uh, the zeitgeist of 2020 that we're living through, uh, that we're channeling, if you get what I mean. Uh, other stuff, we're not discarding it. We're just choosing to kind of, it, it, it's to one side. Um, it, it's not been discarded, discarded, but we're not emphasising it. We're just cherry picking bits that that uh, feel like they have the requisite sort of horror, dread and awfulness that we're trying to um, channel in what we're doing. I mean, I, I changed some of the design aspects. I mean, I 
I looked at, you had Bolland's Dead World, which was basically the post-genocide bit. Then you had um, the bit with Greg. Greg did a story where Mrs. Gunderson or Death was dressed as an old lady. And he, <laughs> he went medieval type of... And with Half-Life, where you had this whole swathe of the story in Deadwood, and it's a much more up-to-date, uh, dystopian, you know, quite Russian-feeling, um, gloomy, concrete nightmare, really. So I took that as my design... That was my design bible, in a way, that I said, right, OK, well, I, I'll ignore the medieval stuff, and we'll we'll concentrate more on making it sort of brutalist, concrete... Dead will be more about brutalist concrete um, decaying. Uh, when concrete decays, it's got metal struts in it. So that gives me an idea that you can have a skeletal building eventually once it decays. And, it, you know, so there's things I have rejected. There's things I changed. Um, I didn't fancy drawing all the little details on the the eagle, uh, the ter pterodactyl thing every single time I drew a judge. So I'd streamline that down a little bit for just to, to allow me to draw it easily each time I drew it. But also hinting at the new, the new the old you know the 2012 dread movie which was much more a stripped down design aspect i thought that will work better for me probably bring up to date a little bit more but it's still got the sort of pterodactyl feel um and it also that played into the designs of the bikes and everything else and all the ships so there's kind of a design it's kind of got a design element going through it all but it's it's quite loose at the moment and it'll probably get looser as things decay and things fall apart <laughs> I, I really loved the um, <clears throat> the architecture that Brett Ewins and and Brian did the the kind of almost uh, semi organic stuff. So you had the skyscrapers uh, that looked like they were made out of bone, and um, at yeah. one point there's like screaming faces, isn't there? And it's sort of in it. So I think we're we're trying to find a compromise, aren't we? A route a route from collapsing dead world through to the, the the thing that we saw in the early 80s dread strips um of this kind of techno organic thing and I like that's how sort you of explain that as well how, how do we get from yeah builds to these sort of geiger-esque biomechanical things and i like the i mean the, the dead solid bomb that you used in the last book doomed was it and uh, the idea that it mutates fabric the fabric of reality and changes things into this terrible um you know organic mess really it's great i felt we needed a mechanism to get from point a to sort of i don't know yeah. point x as it were further down the timeline how, how how does that work and then i don't know i just sat at home thinking about dead fluids and i thought well of course we lost him Keck? You still yeah, of course, there's going to be different states oh, of dead matter. Keck. De dead Keck, we just lost you there for uh, 30 seconds or so. And, uh, you... Hello? Oh, dear. Is it? <laughs> I, think, I think it's him. Dead solid. Keck, we're losing you. It's, a, it's dead solid, isn't it? Oh, is it me? No, no, no. It, it's because oh, no, no. you're coming through loud and clear. Okay. Are you keck? Oh no that that is a that is a proper mashed up signal. Really. So sort of maybe that's oh. Hi, keck. Can. Hello, hello. You you are you are coming in and out. Yeah, I think it's a bad USB. Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> How about now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I think the USB at the back of the PC was getting twisted. Ah. What I'm going to have to do? I'm just going to. Yeah, my kids have. I'm just going to unplug, replug it in, so that um, I'm not tugging at that USB. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> At least it's not my Wi-Fi crapping out on us like it does on a regular basis. Where are you based? 
Oxford. Oh right, is it, is it uh, okay there, or is it just a bit? It, it's 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 just. It's fine. The problem is, is that my wife and I both work from home. Right. Yeah. And uh, we, I do a lot of podcast recording, and she does a lot of online meetings. She works at the university. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we sometimes we're constantly on the same signal, and it'll just it will wait until we're about twenty minutes in, and then it will just crap out completely. Right. Madness. How about now? Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 loud and clear. Yeah. Somebody wrapped a. Um... Hair, hair dryer lead around <laughs> so i think i moved slightly and then pulled the usb so <laughs> wow uh where were we right um, head solids wasn't it yeah that's right yeah uh so we were looking at, at, at a mechanism to get from um earlier in the time timeline a relatively nice scraper type landscape. Uh, can can you still hear me? Um, you, uh, yes. I, don't, I don't think the dark judges want you talking about dead solids. Yeah, as soon as you started <laughs> talking, you started coming in and out again. Oh Would no! You give too many of their plans. How about now? Yeah. Let me just lay all the leads on the table so that there's no movement. Right, I'll try and sit perfectly still. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. It, or is it fading in and out? I, I, you just, there's just a little. I don't know whether it's crosstalk or, or whether you're fading in and out. But you know what? Just, just go for it. Just. Okay. Just start talking. Uh, um, yeah. So we needed a mechanism to go from. Uh, a world that's relatively like ours to, to this kind of techno organic architecture of the Brett Ewins, Brian Bolin era, where you've got these skyscrapers that look like they're made of bone and cartilage and stuff like that. So the, the sort of mechanism we come up with was, uh, I was thinking about, um, dead fluids. And then I thought, I wonder if there's other states of matter for, for dead matter, so I started thinking about dead vapors and don't chuckle, uh, dead solids, <laughs> etc. Maybe dead plasma. Uh, so we came up with this uh, this idea of a bomb. So they let this bomb off, and then it starts actually playing around with the very nature of matter. So even the architecture and uh, and um, physical aspects of where this bomb hits stuff starts getting mutated, um, and it starts changing into the the sort of version of dead world that we know from the early 80s D does that make sense yeah yeah no absolutely absolutely because it, it's it was interesting a, a point i think someone made on 2084 on the other day was that they they had assumed the series was going to be about um how the judges how the dark judges came to power but actually what they've ended up getting is the bit after that point where um things are it's it's kind of and i think we've talked about this before kate you know they're beyond the tipping point they yeah. are it's got to the point now where what we are witnessing is the decline after that tipping point um which it is you know is an interesting distinction i feel yeah i i think we are also going to see glimpses well not think i know we will see glimpses of how they come to power because um in Ava Eastwood's own story, we sort of see parts of um, how things get increasingly corrupt, um, how, how the judges of Dead World start sort of twisting into this awful sort of totalitarian thing. Um, there, there's an episode coming up, which Dave's illustrated, I think, which kind of touches on that. Is that the Ava? The Ava. Yeah, the Ava the one. Ava, no spoilers. Yeah. Yes, that's, yeah, that's that's relatively straightforward. That one, isn't it? It's, but it's still incredibly. It's much more of a personal story, so that should be interesting. It's yeah, not so much of the the dark. You know, there's not so much of the supernatural. That's more like a police procedural, and uh, yeah, that that works really well. But it, but it also shows us a little bit of um, you know what was going on, what that world was like. Um, Earlier in the sort of uh, the, the 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 collapse, you know, Sydney's still uh, he's still a, a judge. Um, so yeah, I think we're hopefully 
be seeing sort of more glimpses of that side of things. So uh, we may see bits as, as we go up to what Mike calls the the tipping point, as well as the bit the the horrible slide downwards. <laughs> no, no spoilers, but that that particular Ava Eastwood story has huge implications for the main the main thread of the story as well, doesn't it? So uh, it, that yeah. should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't yeah, wait. I don't know what to I, say. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly excited as a fan to see how you take that Visions of Deadwood story and it feeds into the the main narrative, which hopefully we start next year. And you know, it's got yeah. all sorts of ramifications, isn't yeah. it? Sort of between between the the characters in the main story. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a collision coming, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a pleasant one <laughs> for all concerned. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. We'll have to see how that one plays out. One of the things that, that I'm interested in is, is about the characters who aren't the Dark Judges, because, you know, they're, they're our kind of humanity. They're our uh, empathic through line in, in, in the story. Kate, do you want to talk a little bit about, about these characters and, and um, how you approach... Uh, the victims, I guess, in this situation. Yeah, I mean, uh, from from the get go, when when we first started talking about doing four, um, it, it seemed really important to to have something that was based on the ground, so to to see the fall through the eyes of ordinary people, as it were, and have the dark judges as these sort of. Uh, off-camera presences for a while these really huge horrific things we know what they're capable of but it's nice to see well nice that's the wrong word to see them through the eyes of ordinary people like what would they look like to say you and I you know these these kind of supernatural entities um, really dark horrific presences Um, so yeah from the get-go we wanted to kind of base it base it on the ground uh, start off with an ordinary family, uh, see how the initial stages of the of the fall affect them in terms of like weird weather, climate change, that sort of thing, um, disruption to their life, a breakdown in normalcy. If if they were living in a city, they would be seeing this firsthand. But we've got them out in Dead World's equivalent of the Midwest, as it were, so they're a little bit more remote. So things have kind of crept up on them. The collapse has started, but these people maybe they've seen hints of it with stuff going on, uh, but they've not taken the full brunt yet. So we as the readers in the first series were able to kind of um, see events through their eyes, catch up with the pace that they're sort of seeing things. Um, and then, of course, Judge Fairfax comes into their their life Um He's he's trying to get away from the city. He ends up sort of bringing hell down on them. Uh, I wanted to kind of play with the idea of we're, we're used to judges generally in Dred's world being, um, you know, uh, a force for justice or otherwise. So I quite straight away I wanted um, a character that might be a reverse Judge Dredd, as it were. So uh, what if our judge was a corrupt uh looking out for number one kind of character what's his backstory how did he get to be that way so these are the kind of starting points that we set up in the in the first series an ordinary family a judge comes but he's not a good judge he's on the run uh so that's our start that was our opening gam- gambit our opening perspective And how, is, well, let's put it this way. Is it difficult to um, keep that humanity going when, when writing something like about horror? Because I, I remember um, listening to a, an interview with uh, a writer, I can't even remember who it was, uh, who said they have to resist the temptation to continually turn the screws on their uh, on their characters just because, you know, that, that that's that's something that drives forward narrative and things like that is, is <laughs> do you sometimes think, Oh, I'm, I'm being a bit meme here. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> this sound, this is going to sound weird, I guess, to, to 
people who don't write, but you you do get engaged uh, w- with the characters. Um, they take on a life of their own when when you're working with an artist like Dave, really brings them to life. Um, they start to feel real to you. You know, maybe I should get out more often. I don't know. <laughs> but you, you start getting a feel of who they are, what they are, what they're about, what their motives are. Um, after a while, they start telling their own stories. And you can't help but feel sympathetic towards them. So going back to your, um, you know, turning the screws on them. Um, yes, you need drama, you need tension, you need to turn up the heat on them to to get a good story out of it. But I can't help, you know, as a, as a writer and as a human being to, to feel sympathetic towards them. Um, I know it points that, you know, some of them are going to have to die, I'm going to have to kill them off. Um, we did that with Patty a while back. And uh, I have to say, I will be sat at my keyboard and I will have a lump in my throat, Mike, when I start, type those words of, you know, you know, the light goes out of so-and-so's eyes. <laughs> you you know, that sounds, people are going to go, Jesus, call for the, you know, call the straitjacket guys. I remember, from... I remember Keck, when you, when you were writing Damned, you were t- just sending me emails. I'm sorry, Dave, I don't know what I've done to this poor family, but <laughs> <laughs> bumped off at a fair old rate and uh you know poor <clears throat> Jess, jesse was getting mother getting killed grandfather gone and i can remember you just apologizing to me all the time about what you were doing to this family i didn't care i was <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's go with granddad's death now. <laughs> you, you cold, heartless man. Do, do you know, I'd forgotten about the first series because six years. But yeah, they go off in short order, don't they? Yeah, we don't have to knock them around, don't we? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I hadn't quite got as emotionally invested in those guys because I'd only had them a few episodes. But um, <laughs> <laughs> now we're into like, I don't know, four series of Jess, et cetera. You kind of think, oh, my God, you know, I, I, at some point I'm going to have to bring the axe down on A, B and C. And it's uh, uh, it's like, oh, my God, we're, you know, <laughs> I'm going to be a I'm going to be a wreck. You're going to get these blubbering emails from me, Dave. Going, oh, you know, even Siren, I really like. You know, she started off as a, a villain, and now we kind of see there's more layers to her as well. We've kind of brought her to life. I've got a fondness for all these characters. It's Dave. like the Bone Man thing, though. It just, I mean, the fact is, I think going back a little bit into the conversation is that. Lots of the fans say, "Well, we know what happens at the end of Dead World. We that's that's the that's the mantra I always hear. Yes, we know what happens? Yes. We, we know, but I think we're trying to say, well, do you really know what we've got planned, or or what is actually going to happen? I mean, Bone Man kind of is our answer to that. That well, there could be something more beyond Dead World that we're looking at. There could be something bigger, or something even bigger than the Dark Judges behind all this. I mean, and uh, so I think the idea is is that our characters may not quite have the, you know, final end that people seem to think. Not, not I, well, some of them, you know. Yeah, it's not as uh, clear and dry, cut and dry as, as some people might think. No. And I, I don't know about you, I love stories with underdogs in them anyway. You know, it's my kind of favourite stories, really. So here we've, we've got a young woman, Jess, you know, going up against these, these monsters, you know. Can she make a difference? Can she change things? Can her, you know, this weird ragtag alliance of um, freaks, misfits and outsiders, can they actually change things and the, wow. the way you twist the judge child idea as well that you know really <clears throat> owen chrysler w- would be a perfect judge child for the dark judges wouldn't he um but they don't get that they get a normal girl with no psychic powers especially you know nothing majorly powerful about her she's just empathetic and, and the opposite to what death is and uh Although she does do quite a lot of killing doesn't she, <laughs> she she's starting to get into it get, I think, I think, yeah yeah there's that aspect of the, the dual nature of the dead world alternative universe thing that their judge child is actually just a normal kid with a family, loves her family. And it is just, you know, having to deal with this huge supernatural force, which, um, you know, she's not doing a bad job considering. 
I think, uh, you know, that gun training that Gramps gave her came in handy. That's <laughs> before we killed him. Yeah, here's, here's an assault rifle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, find that, I find that fascinating. I'd like to see where that goes. Well, she hasn't we... met death yet, has she? No, that's that's going to be an interesting encounter. Yeah. Although she's yeah, she's disappeared off into some sort of alternative universe at the moment, hasn't she? She's been sucked into the the sisters' realm. So um, yeah. Well, you know, she she came after Fairfax. So Fairfax went into the city. Jess, bless her, goes on a quest to get Fairfax back. Well, it's now going to be, it's up to him to man up and show what he's made of, you know. Yeah. Is is there good inside of him? He's got to now try and, you know, find her. That's the next step in their relationship. Cool. So, I, I, I remember the um, just talking about the whole. You know, we know how this is going to end. Thing. I'm just thinking back to the the, the uh, kind of original visions of, of Dead World, um, where you had uh, the, the wonderful sight of four very bored uh, <laughs> dealing with essentially eternity um, on their on their own terms. You, you 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 look at Mortis and and you know his world of decay, which is. Uh, and his garden and everything, which I, I, I think was wonderful. Could, and it's, it, I think there's a, a, a question there, a point to be made about uh, the portrayal of, of kind of destiny and inevitability and the fact that, you know, inevitability is at the heart of this strip. It always has been. You know, we do know in broad terms how things are going to end. But that doesn't mean that the, the journey is is any worse like you know and, and any story that has a character who has a destiny you, you know pretty much that they, they're going to fulfill that destiny you just don't know how they're going to do it and that's oh. the point of the journey you know yes it's life isn't it you know we're, we're all faced with our inevitable end as human beings yet we do something with our time we you know, we hope, we we dare to dream. It sounds corny, but um, we're seeing a reflection of that. It's a journey rather than the goal, isn't it, for the Dark Judges? Yes. They're, they're disappointed at the end, I guess. It's like, well, is that it? <laughs> With a, few, death few and mushroom, a few mushrooms, uh, you know. Death and Mortis, <laughs> they, they got what they wanted, you know. Let's end everything. Well, what's left? Gardening. <laughs> <laughs> and like a like a like a like a, a druggie, they need to go and do do it again. They need that 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 thrill of let's go to Dreads World and, and try it there, but it doesn't work quite so well. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there's a paper to be written about the uh, the kind of Nietzschean um, consequence of of that kind of uh, anti life nihilism. You know, yeah. the, the the fact that um, when all life is gone. There, there is nothing. So if you know, it, it, it the, the, the inherent they need life, really. Exactly. The yeah. Yeah. Of judges is that when they succeed, yeah, they continue. They are the life. You know, it, it's it's kind of, it's it's one of the it's the perversity at the heart of the dark judges that makes them so interesting as characters. That that uh, for all of their all of the horror of of what they do. They are philosophically and psychologically complex ideas, you know? And they're tied to the living, aren't they? They are tied to the living. They need them um, as individuals anyway. They, they are also us as well with all the pettiness and spite and, and, and shallowness, you know, for all, the, for all these great plans and all the, you know, we're going to do this and do that. They're still squabbling and <laughs> carrying on, you know. Um, well, there's, there's, I mean, you talk about the, the statue made of teeth, um, you know, that, that is pure egotism. And at the heart of, of particularly death, there is that, there is an ego there. There, there is that desire yeah. to control, and and um, you know you you see the same ideas uh, rift off in in characters like Thanos um, and 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 whatnot. But I don't think any of them really go all the way in the way that <laughs> does. You know, going all the way. <laughs> I mean, he's just a petty. He's really just a petty psychopath, and always has been. With these just delusions of grandeur about what he actually 
you know, he's basically fooling himself that he's he's achieving this this sort of uh, moral crusade. But there's nothing more to him than just a, a psychopath with supernatural powers, isn't he? He's, he's that's all he is, really. Um, and a total control freak as well. <laughs> you know, he, he's the he's this master schemer. And, and going back to what you say, without the living, you know, it, he he thrives, I think, in, in in my view, on game playing and, and and scheming and being the smartest guy in the room and all that. But you know, if you get rid of everybody else, who's left? You know, so yeah. again, like you said, Dave, he 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 needs fresh, fertile lands, other other worlds to go to. Otherwise, yeah. well, what is there? He in the end, he. Well, it's like Trump and his bunch, we were saying earlier, you know, he's just going to play games with his own urges because that's all there is to sort of mess with, isn't it? I think I think was what was interesting as well. When we first started off, we said, well, let's keep the dark judges in the background. No one's going to believe no one's going to get on board with the dark judges as some sort of rotting, um, undead politician controlling your life. And I'm thinking, actually, <laughs> we, might, we might have been a bit wrong there. <laughs> uh, don't get too political, but we may actually have been really wrong that people would not get on board. With, and that gives an interesting idea. There could well be something in the future where we actually there are people who are quite happy to be um, controlled by uh, the dark judges. We, it, it's fascinating at the moment to see um, a lot of uh, particularly left wing commentators in the States refer to the Republican Party as like a death cult. Yeah. yeah, you know the, the the worship of of nihilistic power has only one conclusion, um, which is death. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is a you know an, an a huge point well. of view, um, and it, I, I I I always love the idea of of uh, creators starting out on a uh, on on a path of a story and pulling back from what they consider to be excess you know oh that's a bit too far yeah. and then the world <laughs> catching up with them in <laughs> um and uh it reminded me i think it was paul cornell um tweeted about how uh you know the one thing that john Wyndham didn't put in day of the triffids was lots of blind people ducking underneath flailing triffids as they go to the shops for christmas <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, is, is you know, it, it feels very much, I mean, it's very much part of um, a Dead Wall series, but also part of a Judge Dredd series. This kind of, you know, the desire to just carry on and, you know, oh, the mundanity of, of uh, I think it was a, an academic who, who looks at um, uh, the uh, authoritarian state in, in Malaysia. You know, he, he refers to the banality of authoritarianism. The fact that for, the, for most people it becomes almost background radiation, and because they just want to get on with their lives, and you can you can absolutely see as Dead World is literally, you know, the bees are dead, everything is crumbling around them, and like, no, 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 I, I, it's going to be Christmas as normal. <laughs> is, is that the king who has the who wears the little um, tight vests and has the poodle thing? Is that is that the Malaysian king? Is that or is that the I'm just thinking of strange rulers that people really just worship, and, and you're thinking, what what the hell are you playing at? Um, there's there's a little, I think he's a Thailand king. He's 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 like a little god king, and he's he's a he lives in Germany now, but he wears little tight shirts and goes shopping for a poodle. <laughs> but people worship him. I mean, that's the thing. It's like really, it's you know, I think that's the thing with Dead Deadwood for me is my safe place <laughs> at the moment, and I think it, it is it is amazing how. Reality is actually just more bizarre than you could ever put down on the page. Honestly, that that's so right, Dave. I mean, it's there's been points where where I've, I've kind of ever anything I've thought was satire. The world's only been about two millimeters behind it. You know, <laughs> you you put in some crazy sort of bizarre idea, and then three days later, you look on the internet and and you go. Oh my God! That's like it's you know it's not that far removed. Unless we're actually writing, <laughs> we're actually writing. <laughs> I'm sure Steve Ditko <laughs> did that in a <laughs> in a comic a few years ago. So the are writing. We're we just providing a blueprint for all this. Oh no! <laughs> Don't say that. 
well so if we if we are i'm i'm uh, i'm hoping there's some hope humanity and humor in what we're doing and maybe that's the the root out of all this craziness well there's a book there's a book called warrior cop and it's it's basically about the militarization of the american police and this it's you know there's this line of 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 guys on the on the uh, cover and it could be a, a line of judges you know literally yeah yeah, yeah totally yeah. The, 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 one of the big things about satire is is that it's not necessarily about the future; it's about the now. But yeah, exactly. the roots of the future are in the now. So you know, you, you look at the the stuff that was happening um, in 1970s Britain uh, when um, John and Carlos and, and Pat were, were crafting Judge Dredd, and and you know, strikes where um, the, the the PSU, the Public Support um, uh, Police Support Unit. Um, which was the kind of first pa proper paramilitary um, group of, of, of police in uh, England being deployed against strikers. You know, this 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 yeah. it was absolutely no surprise to anybody who lived in Northern Ireland or in, in yeah. the, any of um, uh, Britain's uh, colonial possessions. Um, but you know, there's this the starkness of seeing. I think it was the Battle of Lewisham where. Riot shields were used, to, like long riot, sh riot shields were used for the first time. Um, and that, that must be a hell of a shot. But of course, you know, you, you extrapolate outwards and what you end up with is, is, <laughs> is just dread. But you end, up, you end up with very specific things like riot foam and, uh, yeah. you know, it's, you know, concrete foam, which seals the, the rioters in, in place. Or yeah. we have it, you know, it's here. It's, uh, but it's, 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 it's bizarre. It's, it's, it's not so much they're predicting the future. They're just talking about the present, which is... A yeah. process, you know, and and it doesn't it doesn't take a genius to see where things are going, but it does take genius to be able to turn that into uh, an amusing comic book. Script <laughs> <or>. <laughs> amusing, a, a sensitive type of thing. Oh yeah, just just read this, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean the put in Dave as well. I mean Boston Di Boston Dynamics, is it oh, yeah. that they've got the Robo Horse? You know that they're no doubt DARPA are planning to use that against people in the next three or four years. So we'd all be surprised when that happens. <laughs> if, we, if we're allowed out. <laughs> yeah. I'm not allowed out now. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, 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 the last year, who, who knows what's going to happen? It's, uh, it, uh, yeah. Mm. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> now we've cheered ourselves up. Yeah. Um, I go back to I go back to dead rules in a bit anyway. <laughs> so I'll, be, I'll be okay. Well, let's, let's, let's just round off by by talking a little bit more about the the, the art on this because um, this is a series which uh, is very much kind of you know body horror and and uh, decaying landscapes, but also one uh, sort of filled with action. Dave, do do, do you find yourself? In, in, have you ever found yourself in a situation where? Um, the demands of the strip mean that you have to kind of step outside of your normal style or, or they challenge you in a way that you just weren't expecting at all? Um, I mean, the horror... I'm actually quite enjoying the the more... I mean, the great thing about the script, it has a lot of humanity in it. So I, I particularly, as a, as a guy who seems to be doing a lot of horror and seems to be known for it, uh, I quite enjoy doing the Jesse stuff and the more emotional stuff. That, that, that for me... Is very rewarding and it, it does break up the the action and the violence and everything else but you know for instance at the moment there's a little section with with a lot of uh fighting going on and i've just received a, a cam kennedy um battle book and it, it's just so informative about how to, to draw battles and, and how much that can inform so i'm constantly looking at new artists and and old artists to see how do i how do i achieve that I don't actually steal it, but it, it just feeds into my into my process that that dynamic, especially Cam Kennedy, he has this dynamic for battles which has been informing me quite a bit. It may not show up, but it's it's something that I'm looking at. And really, that's the thing with comics is you've got to draw everything in it. So one minute you've got cities being hit by pink bombs and things going off and weird weird cr creatures, and next minute you've got you know. A, a small intimate scene um yeah I, I i love it i think that's important i think i need that if i was doing horror all the time i think it would i'd probably get quite jaded even though i enjoy it so much um 
but that's that's just the nature of being an artist i think you have to draw everything in the script i think that's why comics are such a good training ground for um and in, in terms of the kind of atmosphere obviously 350 pages of atmosphere <laughs> Um, but I, I, I'm kind of I, I'm interested in in the how to describe it the vibe of of a series you know just the, the 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 feeling of it what it inspires in you as an artist as you're as you're doing it and whether um, whether there are challenges to maintaining that feeling over such a long period of time because you know it, it, you're, you you've got the opportunity to to, to build something quite significant here in terms of uh, pages alone yeah uh, to, to, to maintain that feel and, and have that slow burn over so long at the moment it's not i'm not having any problems because i think as i said before everything in deadwood is almost new so i can i'm, I'm still haven't explored all the I, i've got books i never thought i'd have piles of russian brutalist architecture sitting on my floor which i reference it doesn't always show up but it's it's this stuff which kind of informs the the strip and um i also look at a lot of uh, photojournalism because I, I enjoy that seems to capture proper horror over maybe a film strip or uh, uh, you know a, a film of of a, an event if 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 it's a, if it's a made up fictional film it doesn't have the same impact to say um a, a book of journalistic photographs so if i want someone looking genuinely distressed i will look at photojournalism as, as a as a reference which so really i just i tend to drag lots of stuff in i mean unfortunately I'm not in my studio i could show you the absolute state of of, of it and the books piled on the floor but uh my internet isn't working in there at the moment but it's it's uh yeah it's a joy to just drag new stuff in and, and to keep myself um fresh if i can because that's that's what i need to keep it keep it uh exciting and i think that's what visions have done vision this particular um, group of episodes has helped because it's taken us away from the general um you know th three character kind of arc thing which is going on in the main story to, to to expand us a bit and then we can bring it back in and and hopefully when we get to back to the main story we'll be you know a bit fresher and a little bit more you know it's given us a break. It's been a palate cleanser in a way. If you can call visions cleanse. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's allowed me to expand. We've had, you know, we've had uh, end of dead world. We've had little sections inside just intimate things in the hospitals and things. Like that. I'm not giving anything away, but we've got some interesting stuff in visions, which, yeah. Yeah. You know, just keep it exciting. Keep doing different things and looking at different resources. And yeah, it's hard to explain really. Cause it's, I, I every time I think I'm, oh my god, this is hard work or I'm struggling. I think, what would I rather be doing? And there's nothing much else I'd rather be doing. So I always kick that back into my consciousness that, hang on a minute, you're doing a dream job here. You're being asked to draw what you want to draw, <laughs> and it's not there's not an awful lot of editorial interference either, which is is rather unique actually. Matt does let the artist do. He ha he has trust in the artist to produce what they want to produce, which is very very refreshing. It's not every company acts that way. But yeah. And in terms of of looking to the future, um, w without giving too many spoilers away, uh, as we said, this series does have <laughs> a very definite endpoint. Um, but Keck, do you have? Do you have that endpoint in mind? Do you have a, a roadmap, or are you feeling your way? It's it's a bit of both, Mike. I have I have kind of um, what should I say? Uh, dots on the road along, you know. So I I know where my milestones are roughly, but but I also leave myself loads of wriggle room for improvisation because I mean. Um, it, there's literally not a week that goes by. I might be working on something else and then suddenly I'll be, I'll, I'll kind of have a flash of something to do with dead world. And out comes another sheet of paper, right? Got it. Got to grab that while it, you know, while it's fresh in your head. So there's constant sort of, um, new ideas, new feels coming into it, but yeah, there's, there's a rough roadmap. Um, there, there's a, 
an endpoint beyond the endpoint that I've got in mind. Uh, but we are also feeling our way down that highway towards stuff. Anything could happen, you know, <laughs> which going back to what Dave was saying, it keeps it fresh for me because, uh, you know, one week I might think, well, I was going to do that with that character, but suddenly they reveal themselves in a new way. And you think, ah, that's, yeah, there's a new aspect there. There's somewhere new to go with that character. So that, that's what keeps it fresh and exciting for me. Lovely stuff. Thank you very much indeed to Keck and to Dave uh, for, uh, if anything, braving through the technical issues that we suffered throughout. Um, hope you enjoyed that. We shall see you in seven days' time for what may be our final episode of the year. I'm undecided. Um, so, uh, yeah, if I don't see you uh, until then, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, especially at this time of year. Earthlets, obviously, lots of people making sacrifices and uh, making difficult decisions about whether to see family. But uh, if you can't, I hope it goes well for you. And until next time, Splendid Verthwick. Alert! 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 Fill power levels dangerously high. Alert! Alert! Read 2000 AD every week. Ask your comic book store or newsagent now. Subscribe to the galaxy's greatest comic at 2000adonline.com.